Welcome back. It is a transformation that can be called nothing short of a medical miracle. Mississippi firefighter Patrick Hardison was horribly burned and disfigured over a decade ago, as you see there in the center, during a rescue attempt. Since then, he has endured 70 surgeries. And this past August, he was given the most extensive face transplant in medical history. Hardison received a full scalp and face, including ears, nose, lips, and upper and lower eyelids. As if that wasn't amazing enough, he can finally blink and sleep with his eyes closed, the kind of thing that most all of us certainly take for granted. Hazel Sills pretty much sums it up in this tweet. It says, the science of face transplants is one thing I'd actually call fascinating. A 150-person medical team performed the successful $1 million surgery, and NYU picked up the bill. But the transplant wasn't an official success until Hardison headed into a department store and for the first time in no doubt a long time found not one person gave him a second look. After so many years of being so disfigured, truly a life-changing miracle for that man. Plastic surgeon Dr. Anthony Yoon joins us now via Skype. Dr. Yoon, thank you for being here. This is obviously a, a very rare and obviously very expensive surgery. What is it that makes it so difficult? Well, with any type of a transplant, the key is you need to um, reconnect all the blood vessels and the nerves back into the, into the new person's body. So it's the donor site blood vessels that are connected to the recipient's blood vessels and nerves. Now, when you're dealing with a the face, there's so many nerves and so many blood vessels and so many moving intricate parts that are so important to creating a face and a natural face that it is just very, very intricate and extremely detailed and meticulous. Yeah, no question there is a drastic improvement as we look at the progression, the before and the after. Uh, I'm curious though, you talk about just how many blood vessels, just how many nerves need to be reattached. Is there ever going to be a hope that he will have full function of a lot of the facial movements that one expects from you know, a, a normal situation before he was disfigured? Oh, definitely, and that's the amazing part about face transplants is because you take the face and those muscles are still working, they're, they're still attached to the nerves that they're naturally attached to, and you connect it, and in the end, things should work the same. Now, as you see in his progression of photographs, he starts out looking quite puffy, doesn't look quite natural. As time goes on, the swelling comes down, and those nerves then start regenerating, they start healing, but it is a very slow process. Dr. Nerves you regenerate about a millimeter a day. About a millimeter a day, that is most definitely a slow process. Give me a sense, Dr. Yun, of just how many people in the small community of plastic surgeons out there worldwide to begin with are qualified to perform something like this. I mean, there's only a handful, and you're probably talking about 20, maybe 30 at the most, and one surgeon can't do this all himself. I mean, that surgeon or herself, that surgeon was, that surgery was performed over 26 hours. Oh. There have been other face transplant surgeries that have taken 36 hours. You know, a surgeon's gonna get tired after about six, seven hours, and this is very intensive surgery. So you need a very qualified team. And out of, what, three, 4,000 plastic surgeons in the country, you could probably yeah. count the number that do it on about two hands. Now, beyond the challenges that we've already touched on, do you think it's the financial side of things that makes this surgery, uh, you know, so difficult? So, I mean, so hard to, to obtain for those who might need it? Is that the real well, issue? Definitely. In this situation, the hospital received a grant, and it did cost anywhere from $850,000 to a $1 million, oh. and insurances just aren't going to pay for that. So that's a big problem here. Now, as time goes on, like anything else, hopefully surgery gets more routine and you get better results and it costs much less. Yeah, no question. Obviously, the results that we're looking on there, certainly something that we're all marveling uh, about. And as time goes on, I assume, as you mentioned, swelling goes down, things return to even more normal function. We'll want to keep track of this particular story. Dr. Anthony Yoon, thank you so much. Thank you. Yes.